today's uh, session uh, devoted to applied cybersecurity would be a logic continuation of uh, issues raised by Mikhail and uh, the panelists of the morning session when they discussed uh, indicators and criteria as well as uh, intelligence uh, linked uh, to difficulties in, detect in detecting cyber threats. But however, we will be discussing uh, such interesting issues as response to the threats already identified, facts, trends, collaboration, and interaction between the various stakeholders, achievements, uh, some uh, failures, uh, proposals, uh, stuff like that. These are the things that we will be discussing during this session. Every panelist uh, uh, will have a 10 minute time slot. Please uh, stick to the time allocated to you. Otherwise, I will give you a hint that you would need to wrap up your presentation. Uh, save your questions until the Q&A, which will take place right after all the panelists take uh, the floor. But uh, I will abuse my right as a facilitator and ask you uh, my questions as we go. Without further ado, let's move on to the agenda. The emphasis will be put on the banking uh, industry uh, during this section, and that's exactly who I'm going to like to pass on the floor to. Dmitry Bonder, Alpha Bank Belarus, the floor is all yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the title of my presentation is uh, Fishing a Myth or a Reality. I was told that this is the title uh, that I should use, and it's uh, quite obvious uh, uh, for everyone that fishing uh, is not a myth, it's uh, a new normal. Uh, well, uh, over the past uh, 10 years, phishing has been uh, one of the main attack uh, tools, uh, and Alpha Bank faces uh, dozens uh, of uh, phishing attacks uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, well, last week, uh, we uh, faced 46, uh, 46 uh, phishing attacks. Uh, the week before last one, we faced 50. 15 one five, uh, one five, uh, percent of phishing attacks or targeted uh, attacks, uh, which means that it's not an any cast, it's not a broadcast, they target a specific organization. Oftentimes they pose and uh, disguise as uh, counterparties, uh, you know, uh, banking, uh, bank officers, regulators. Uh, this is an example of a non targeted phishing. It's a broadcast when uh, scammers mail out. Uh, emails with phishing uh, hyperlinks. Uh, the uh, success ratio of such attacks is not that high, but uh, if a victim uh, clicks on a hyperlink, uh, he will see a, a random field for tapping it, tapping in uh, the uh, uh, ID. Uh, uh, logging uh, ID and password. Uh, targeted phishing uh, differs from the non-targeted phishing uh, in that uh, the scammers uh, prepare uh, well uh, the study of the organization uh, and the officials they use uh, spoofing to uh, send out their emails. And uh, when a victim uh, clicks on a hyperlink, uh, he or she uh, goes to a branded uh, copycat uh, version of a corporate uh, portal uh, where they need to type in their login data. This is the, these are the emails that we primarily get. The next uh, type is the targeted phishing with uh, preliminary uh, intelligence. I don't know whether you can see anything in the small print here, but uh, uh, scammers uh, learned in advance that uh, the company uh, wanted to organize a team building uh, exercise and they uh, sent, uh, they uh, mailed out uh, emails uh, to a bank officers uh, whose emails they found uh, online uh, with a request to register for this event online. In the, uh, well, recently we have uh, faced uh, targeted phishing with uh, Preliminary calls. Corporate phone numbers uh, are abused by uh, the scammers. They call potential victims and they use various stories uh, to prepare them for a phishing uh, email. For instance, in this particular case, scammers uh, uh, acted as if they were uh, IT, uh, IT help desk. Uh, they uh, said that there was a problem with, with connecting with the headquarters and they wanted the user to uh, install the updates on their own. And when the, the victim uh, clicked on the hyperlink, uh, uh, he uh, reached a branded 
a branded uh, website uh, and even the URL uh, uh, states alphabank.tech uh, so they uh, uh, replaced just two letters and they used a Trojan uh, malware. Uh, well, the high quality of visuals on the phishing uh, pages uh, uh, stems from the fact that they they can uh, copy uh, copycat uh, uh, our uh, real web pages. Uh, they uh, can they can prepare for the atta attacks with the open source intelligence, and uh, they launch multi-stage attacks. Uh, for instance, they can. Uh, uh, send an email to a chief accountant uh, with a request uh, uh, to forward this data to to an officer from a financial department, and this officer would treat it with great trust because it, he would get it from uh, the chief accountant. Uh, they uh, they use QR codes for the victims to uh, go outside of the protected perimeters. And uh, they use um, multiple, uh, well, uh, the perimeter uses multiple uh, phishing, uh, into phishing uh, tools. However, if a victim uses a QR code uh, to get outside of the protected perimeter, uh, then uh, this device will no longer be protected. Phishing as a service uh, is a, something that we've seen in the dark, in the dark uh, net uh, for a very long time. Uh, the uh, price uh, could differ from zero to several dozen thousand, se several uh, dozen uh, US dollars. Uh, you can rent uh, a phishing service uh, without having any expertise. Social engineering, manipulation, and threatening, it's nothing new. Uh, well, uh, some uh, scammers uh, phone their potential victims uh, and they would introduce uh, the, the, the would introduce them, uh, they, they would introduce themselves as uh, uh, heads of retail department. Oftentimes, you know, they uh, state job titles that do not exist, uh, and all our employees are trained to use reference books to double check uh, the titles and the names of their bosses. So there are ways to fend off such attacks. Uh, well, uh, targeted uh, attacks uh, are difficult to detect uh, because uh, phishing pages uh, uh, don't leave that long. They are not included in the databases. Uh, they don't have any malware. Uh, they only have fields for tapping into your personal data. And uh, low awareness of the users uh, is the main problem from our viewpoint. Even if you have the most advanced information security system, if you have uh, non-competent uh, staff, uh, the overall protection level is not gonna be that high. As for the countermeasures, and naturally uh, you can use technical measures such as SPF, DKIM, uh, DMARC. Uh, you can uh, provide multi-tiered uh, email protection. Uh, use the cyber uh, intelligence uh, tools. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the attacks. Well, we learned about one of the attacks even before it was launched, and uh, we uh, received the. Uh, uh, data on the registration of a domain name that looked uh, similar to ours and the visuals were similar to uh, ours. Cyber uh, security exercises uh, uh, is uh, a way to identify the weakest links. Uh, that is uh, also a way to raise awareness. Constant communications aimed at increasing the level of awareness among the staff is also a must. They should be done on a regular basis uh, or one-off exercise once a year is not enough. Emails are not enough. People tend to forget about such information. So in our case, uh, we do uh, uh, such publications at least once every quarter. We do publications on uh, the uh, corporate web portal. Uh, we send out emails and stuff like that. I hope uh, I managed to deliver my presentation on time. Thank you so much. I would agree with you that staff training is a top, topmost priority for all of us because you know uh, humans are the weakest link uh, in the chain. I have a question for you, if I may. Uh, what's the scale uh, of the financial losses uh, incurred by your customers? Uh, 
uh, how significant are they if they are uh, subject to to uh, targeted fishing? Uh, well, uh, in Belarus, uh, fishing is a huge problem, uh, and even the regulators started started paying attention to fishing attacks in Belarus. So there are certain recommendations uh, and even requirements. Within the company, it's uh, way more uh, easier because it's. Uh, uh, simpler to raise awareness among uh, the bank officers than uh, as opposed to customers. Communications uh, should cover not just uh, employees, bank employees, but also uh, customers. You can go through the website uh, or uh, through the mobile banking app. Uh, and you should use simple language uh, to brief uh, customers uh, on the uh, techniques used by the scammers and the fraudsters. And my second question uh, is as follows. For instance, uh, in uh, Russia, banks, uh, well, uh, the Bank of Russia uh, that have a FinCert uh, uh, department uh, and FinCert uh, can suspend domains uh, through the domain patrol project, uh, which is uh, supported by the uh, .ru and .rf uh, CCTLD coordination center. Uh, and uh, they can go uh, to the RBL of the Russian Communications Supervision Agency and so on and so forth. So uh, what do you do in your case? Uh, who do you turn to if you detect an attack? We do interact with the regulators, including uh, the uh, National Bank uh, Security Department of the Republic of Belarus. And uh, uh, we uh, share, uh, we timely share the data if we detect any external attacks. Right, got it. We do have people from the regulator uh, here. Uh, we'll, we'll give them the floor later on. Thank you so much, Dmitry. Let's uh, give the floor to Alexander Dudenka, chief engineer uh, of uh, uh, from the, of the FinCert, the Bank of Russia. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I wanted to uh, brief you on. Uh, on the way to counter uh, attacks uh, against our customers. As uh, for uh, anti-fraud activities, uh, the Bank of Russia uh, embraces a comprehensive approach aimed at ensuring security, responding to attacks against uh, financial institutions. Uh, we also block phone numbers used by fraudsters and scammers. And in addition to that, uh, we also block uh, websites uh, and uh, web resources, both uh, in uh, .ru uh, domain and the foreign domains. Uh, and uh, we also try to raise awareness amongst the public, uh, starting from high school kids and up to uh, retired people. Since uh, 2016, uh, we've uh, been a competent authority in uh, the uh, .ru and .rf uh, domain zones. And uh, among other things, we deal with uh, phishing, a botnet, uh, ma management, uh, unauthorized access by third parties uh, to various systems. As for... Uh, information sharing, over 1,000 organizations uh, send uh, to us uh, data on uh, abused uh, domains and uh, resources of malicious nature. Uh, and in addition to that, FinCER deals with uh, cyber and information security organizations. So they send to us databases on the uh, ident uh, identified uh, abused or malicious resources. As for interaction with uh, registers in the uh, Russian domain zone. Uh, these are the statistics for 2022. Being part of a central bank, uh, we focus primarily on the financial industry and the domain names rules. Uh, approved uh, currently do not reflect the nature of the resources that we detect uh, and act against. The uh, the uh, number of uh, direct requests is going down, as you can see. Uh, starting from December 2021, the Bank of Russia uh, 
has uh, been able to send the data to the Prosecutor General's Office of the Russian Federation. Uh, amendments were introduced uh, to the federal law on the central bank, uh, and now the central bank can send the data uh, on the resources involved in the financial activities, uh, and that includes banking, uh, insurance services, security uh, exchange services, as well as uh, uh, Ponzi scheme activities. And since we can share this data with the Prosecutor General's Office, uh, as well as uh, block uh, these resources, even before a court of law returns a verdict, we uh, started to actively block uh, resources uh, registered outside of Russia uh, and outside of uh, Russian uh, domain zones. On a daily basis, we share information with the Prosecutor General's uh, Office uh, and uh, this office uh, analyzes uh, this data and send uh, the requests uh, to the Russian Communications Supervision Agency that uh, blocks uh, the access to such resources uh, from for Russian users. As for uh, blocking social media and messengers. Uh, since February 2022, we've been engaging in such activities. We uh, blocked over uh, 10,000 pages uh, in various social media, and uh, we blocked over 74 apps. Now I'd like to uh, share with you examples uh, of uh, websites uh, developed by scammers uh, to steal the money. Uh, for instance, uh, these are uh, copycat uh, bank uh, websites. Uh, it's a totally made up uh, name of the bank and the main uh, objective of such uh, web pages is to get personal data and steal money from the customers. Uh, personal bank accounts, uh, is another example. Uh, this is uh, these are the images that, that I found online in the search engines. Uh, you can uh, scammers can also get access to uh, personal bank accounts. Uh, uh, and by the way, uh, these uh, web pages were registered in Belarus. Uh, we uh, of course uh, do undertake certain steps, but we are limited in our capacity. Uh, banks uh, from the adjacent countries. Uh, could be um, abused, uh, for instance, so this is a case of a Moldovan bank, uh, a, a bank from Kazakhstan would be another example. Uh, we do share information with uh, our foreign counterparts. Fake insurance uh, websites uh, that uh, offer insurance, uh, fake insurance products to potential victims, uh, other resources that uh, run, uh, that allegedly run polls, but the main objective of such websites uh, is to get uh, personal data from the users and then uh, redirect the uh, user to a fake platform uh, selling shares or other securities, for instance, a fake Forex website. And the main objective, of course, is to steal the money. And this slide uh, shows, uh, lists some information uh, on the website uh, that a victim can go uh, to, to get uh, some compensation. And uh, then the victim would, uh, would suffer an additional financial loss. Uh, another example of uh, Ponzi schemes, uh, we do uh, actively detect uh, Ponzi schemes and the websites like that. Platforms that are, that are allegedly engaged in investment activities, everything is done online. This is an image showing that a victim allegedly gets uh, the money, uh, but uh, actually that uh, that forces the victim to uh, wire a huge amount of money to these platforms. We try to counter social engineering schemes uh, and uh, 
Well, uh, you know, scammers in the past few years uh, target uh, specific victims. And as is clear from the slide, this is stage one. Uh, a victim uh, gets a call uh, and uh, they use, uh, the scammers use either uh, ordinary phone numbers or messengers uh, to lure uh, a potential victim uh, into a dialogue uh, with the ultimate objective uh, been stealing the money. They introduce uh, themselves as law enforcement agent, uh, officers uh, or uh, central bank officers. So they would even provide fake IDs and, uh, you know, uh, scammers might uh, even register copycat uh, websites uh, that uh, look uh, just like uh, a website of the central bank and they, they would they would uh, post, uh, upload uh, fake uh, IDs, uh, or they would suggest that the victim should download uh, an app uh, for the sake of protection against fraud and scamming. A very similar uh, approach, uh, apps were uh, uploaded uh, on fake sites, and uh, the main objective uh, is to get access to uh, the smartphone uh, of a victim. On an annual basis, the Bank of Russia runs public opinion polls, and in 2023, uh, over 400,000 people uh, were polled by the central bank. The goal of the poll was to uh, detect the level of satisfaction uh, of the public with uh, the security uh, provided by the financial institutions. And uh, we ultimately established uh, the profile of a typical victim of uh, scammers. In other words, uh, this is the category that suffered the most damage in the past few years. Uh, and as you can see, uh, these are uh, females aged 25 to 44 uh, who live uh, in uh, cities and towns and have an average income. On an annual basis uh, and, a quarter, and on a quarterly basis, the Bank of Russia publishes uh, bulletins on the most relevant uh, attacks. We also publish statistics. Uh, the uh, 2023 uh, overview uh, is posted online. You can use the QR code to uh, go to the relevant web page. Uh, and uh, one other thing I want to mention. Uh, Every February, uh, the Bank of Russia uh, organizes the Urals Forum uh, based in Yekaterinburg. And uh, this forum is devoted to information security and data protection. Uh, you're all invited if you're willing to take part in this forum. Thank you so much, Alexander. Uh, well, uh, when I take a look at such uh, PPD stacks uh, and the screenshots that you included, uh, it sets me thinking. Uh, uh, about uh, the dangerous lives we live in because, you know, scammers uh, get more professional and their visuals are great. You know, you, the web, the fake websites uh, look even better than the real ones. Indeed, indeed, uh, the, this is a high quality uh, copy job. Well, Alexander, I have the following question. In one of the slides, you listed the number of requests uh, that you sent to the uh, Prosecutor General's office. And in the past few years, uh, there is uh, a, a a decline of sorts. Is it because of the seasonality, because of the summer vacations, or what's the reason for that? Well, uh, we embraced a slightly different uh, approach uh, to send a request to the Prosecutor General's office. Uh, well, uh, scammers register a second uh, level, uh, secondary uh, level domains and then uh, they would uh, register dozens or hundreds of uh, third level domains uh, that uh, get changed all the time. So we block second level domains and uh, all the uh, follow-up subdomains. So the statistics uh, include that. While in the past uh, we 
uh, we, we blocked uh, third level domains uh, for 100 of them. Now oh, what we can do is block the second level domain. Uh, that's why the figures went down. But uh, the blocks that we impose are way more effective. Uh, got it. So uh, it's not about the reduced number of incidents. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is not the case uh, and the amount of money stolen is still huge. Exactly. Uh, well, uh, we'll keep on working on that. We give the floor to the banks, both Russian and Bel Belarusian. Now let's move on uh, to experts on cybersecurity and uh, Actually, experts who protect uh, the entire internet. Uh, Dmitry Kirushkin, uh, head of the uh, BuyZone Brand Protection. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, talk to you about uh, phishing in the finance uh, sector uh, and everything related uh, to phishing attacks. On the face of it, it uh, might seem that phishing attacks are not against banks, but uh, this is what it is. Uh, but before I do that, let me share with you some facts and figures and the statistics. So this slide shows the number of leaks that we detected last year. Uh, nine, uh, 981 million lines were leaked uh, from companies that pu published everything uh, in the public domain. So uh, that's the overall figure. We also calculated the average uh, indicator and it, it turned out that uh, every 10th uh, person's data was leaked. So uh, if you have 100 uh, staff in your company, then uh, data on uh, 10 of them would be leaked. Uh, sometimes it's not just uh, login and passwords, but also hash uh, codes and so on and so forth. Uh, just uh, last year alone, we blocked over 110 thousand phishing uh, sources uh, that's uh, more than we did the last uh, the previous uh, the year before our last one and uh, over 90 percent of banks have phishing clones on the internet these are the ones that we detected but actually any bank would have a phishing clone and alexander was right in saying that uh, sometimes there are copycat uh, websites for non-existent uh, non-existing banks so the question is, uh, why do scammers attack the finance sector? How come it's so popular amongst the scammers? Well, first and foremost, uh, it's uh, easier to steal the money from a victim if uh, they use uh, a banking, uh, a bank uh, uh, copycat uh, clone. And uh, money are always uh, money is always linked uh, to emotions and uh, desires to make more money. And uh, now I'd like uh, to brief you on three main emotions uh, targeted uh, and abused by the scammers uh, to steal the money from the potential victims. First and foremost, we're talking about uh, carelessness. Uh, that's uh, what bullet one is all about. Oftentimes people use mobile apps uh, on the run. They would uh, use their smartphones uh, in the subway or in a taxi, in a car, and most of the people use uh, banking apps uh, on the go. Uh, scammers know that and they uh, capitalize on that, they abuse that. There is a definite trend showing that uh, scammers uh, would uh, develop a copycat, a copycat uh, mobile app, uh, not a desktop version, but rather a mobile mobile version of a website. And uh, people are careless when they're on a run, uh, and that plays a bad joke on them. They do not double check the validity of a hyperlink uh, to see whether it's a phishing attack or not. They click on anything. The second uh, emotion that they capitalize on is fear. Oftentimes, uh, scammers use fear to put additional pressure on the victims, for instance, uh, by saying that uh, soon a law enforcement officer will get in touch with you, or you have to pay a fine, your password has expired, so and so on and so forth. So fear is a very strong emotion uh, that scammers abuse, because if people get scared of something, they stop thinking and they uh, act on uh, the recommendations of the scammers and they fall prey to phishing attacks. Uh, 
or fake pages. And last but not least is the uh, desire of gain. For instance, uh, if you are told that you won a, hand, a million uh, in a raffle, all you need to do is, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, to pay a hundred rubles to get your win. Uh, this is what uh, the scammers abuse as well. This is a very popular scheme that we detected this year. Uh, well, actually, it started at the end of last year. Initially, uh, it seems uh, it doesn't seem to be linked with the banks, but uh, trust me, uh, various uh, marketplaces such as Yandex Market, Ozon, uh, Wildberries. As bear market or as bear mega market, scammers would uh, uh, create an account of a fake seller. They would uh, they would offer something for sale. For instance, a smartphone. A victim sees a low price, wants to buy the uh, commodity, uh, places an order for this uh, commodity, and then. Uh, the victim gets a rejection from the seller saying, unfortunately, we're out of stock. The smartphone cannot be sold to you. And then uh, a day later, uh, a victim would get an email saying, we are sorry, uh, uh, we were out of stock, but we have a partner uh, store on a different marketplace. Here's your link uh, with a discount. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a discount for the, for the fact that we canceled your previous order. This is... Uh, fishing for a marketplace or uh, an online platform, but actually it is connected to the bank because ultimately the scammer tries to steal the money from a banking card. And so uh, I believe that uh, even schemes like that, uh, that's, uh, that allegedly target marketplaces actually uh, target uh, banking cards of potential victims. And this is not a standalone uh, scheme. Most of the schemes aim to steal the money from the banking accounts, uh, bank accounts of uh, potential victims. Anyway, it is connected to banks. And of course, there are lots of phishing web pages uh, that aim to uh, steal uh, ID, uh, uh, lo logging ID uh, for Telegram and WhatsApp accounts. They don't steal the money or the bank account data. They steal uh, login data. However, all the other schemes boil down to stealing uh, banking data. For instance, uh, the previous story was about a marketplace uh, uh, and uh, marketplace acting as uh, a delivery means to a phishing uh, page. But a phishing page would st would still require banking details from you. So uh, I would say that if, even schemes like that uh, target banks. Of course, banks try to counter that, uh, but um, a word just skipped my mind. Uh, they don't target a specific bank, uh, but uh, even such generic uh, phishing pages uh, aim, uh, aim to uh, target um, non-branded you know, financial institutions. Uh, let me share with you statistics on the uh, phishing trends starting from uh, July 2023. Unfortunately, uh, the number of phishing pages uh, uh, is going up. Unfortunately, the trend is up uprising. Uh, phishing pages uh, target banks and uh, non-financial institutions. And by the way, I'd like to thank all the partners, including ICANN, for sharing with us uh, uh, the main, uh, the main uh, zone files so that we can double check the mains for phishing content. That helps a lot in what we do. Uh, now, uh, let me focus on the... Uh, adversary uh, concealing techniques, techniques that they use to conceal phishing content. Uh, well, you won't find anything new here. Uh, well, they, uh, they access uh, from target country IP addresses only. And this is uh, something that we see all the time uh, 
if the phishing pages are uh, registered in Belarus. User agent limitations, in other words, phishing, uh, phishing uh, pages are only displayed for mobile users, not desktop users. Bullet three is something that Alexander already mentioned. Uh, that's uh, creating uh, third level and higher subdomains. They just uh, uh, register a second level domain, uh, and under it there are hundreds uh, of uh, phishing pages. Bullet four: unique path for uh, every single user, and it could be time limited. For instance, uh, a scammer tries to uh, fool a specific victim, uh, uh, and he, the scammer creates a uh, long URL that, uh, with a limited lifespan, and uh, it's a challenge to uh, detect this uh, unique URL. And even if even, even if you do detect it, you have to uh, feed it to uh, the register but uh, the lifespan is limited. These are not new techniques, uh, but I just want to highlight them. And uh, bullet six uh, is as follows. Well, it's not a concealment uh, technique, but rather uh, it's, uh, an, it's an unpleasant uh, story happening with a specific registrar. It's um, it's not a Russian, it's not a Belarusian uh, registrar. It's regi it's it has HQ in California and uh, an office in China. So uh, this registrar uh, does not have any feedback uh, form, and you can only uh, file uh, complaints uh, on a web page, and. Uh, And there is a timeout uh, for every single IP address. So uh, you can only send uh, a complaint, a request through the web page. And if we get 30 uh, complaints, we cannot forward it to the registrar. Uh, we uh, even sent uh, the data uh, on this registrar to ICANN. Uh, no results so far, but uh, well, uh, the register uh, gets requests, blocks the phishing sources. You can uh, go to this register, but in practice, it doesn't really work effectively. So, what do we do uh, given so many problems? Can we counter phishing? Well, uh, the answer is a definite yes, we should, and we uh, we should, and we do. Uh, th this is uh, an average number of uh, phishing attacks uh, that our customers uh, are subjected to. Uh, initially, uh, uh, we see a peak uh, when we fine-tuned uh, the tools to detect uh, various phishing attacks. Then uh, scammers uh, try to come up with a second wave uh, of the phishing pages. But since our tools are already fine-tuned, we can block most of them. And then uh, a year later, uh, what we see is that uh, they no longer target this organization. They go somewhere else. Uh, they uh, change their techniques. But nevertheless, the number of phishing attacks against a specific organization goes down. Uh, so. Uh, it's work in progress. We uh, should uh, counter phishing attacks uh, because it yields positive results. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. So uh, new uh, domains uh, are being registered. That means the number of phishing attacks goes up. And that's why we see such uh, a growth rate. Well, as far as a specific uh, organization is concerned, well, uh, scammers have uh, to migrate uh, the phishing uh, pages uh, to a different domain and they target different uh, financial organizations. In other words, if uh, they see that a domain just uh, recently registered is blocked, they realize that uh, it doesn't make any sense uh, and uh, they uh, either use uh, targeted mail outs, uh, for instance, when they create unique phishing pages for every entity, or they target a different company, or they use a different techniques. Uh, technique, for instance, they use Telegram uh, for uh, rather than emails. 
Uh, well, uh, Messenger is a horrible problem. Uh, I didn't have a separate slide on Telegram because it was not about uh, bank, but uh, in Telegram, uh, we see lots of phishing attacks uh, and different, uh, different ways of using Telegram for scamming and fraud. I'm not saying that uh, this is uh, a problem uh, unique for Telegram. It's just a consequence of uh, Telegram being such a popular messenger. Uh, you know, uh, why why use an unpopular messenger if you can use a popular messenger to cover as many people as possible? WhatsApp uh, is also uh, is also uh, a popular delivery means. Exactly. So uh, it's not a question, but rather a comment. Uh, you mentioned the emotions uh, that uh, can be abused by the scammers, uh, and it seems to me that uh, you know uh, criminals uh, 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 use greed uh, or fear uh, as the primary feelings as described by the songwriters, the Soviet era song songwriters. Uh, so uh, what do we do, what do we need do to train uh, our users that they should control, uh, that they should better control their emotions, especially when they try to engage in a transaction. Uh, well, that's uh, an open question. Ilya, please save your question for later for the Q&A. No, no, hold on a second. Uh, you will have a chance to comment on everything uh, later on uh, during the Q&A. Our next expert is uh, Stanislav Goncharov. Uh, head of the Digital Risk uh, Protection Department, uh, FA, uh, well, FACT. Olga, thank you so much for uh, giving us the floor uh, on the last day uh, and during the last se session because we had a chance to talk to everyone. We had a chance to discuss the best practices uh, in the CIS and the region in general. And it turns out that in Russia, the situation is not as bad as... Uh, it might seem there are more adverse regions uh, in that regard. And actually it came out as a surprise uh, for me because, uh, you know, uh, of course we do need to share our, our practical experience. Uh, and there was a great question uh, addressed to Alpha Bank uh, about the way they uh, go about protecting their uh, employees. Uh, we should learn from each other, you know. And my presentation will focus on how to improve uh, interaction uh, amongst the Russian companies. Uh, well, let me briefly introduce uh, FACT as a company to you. We work both in Russia and the CIS. Uh, we uh, uh, spawned uh, from uh, Group IB, uh, which is probably more known to you. Uh, we uh, are engaged in cyber crime forensics. Uh, we provide the security to uh, commercial, non-commercial, uh, non-profit organizations, and uh, digital risks is something that we focus on. And of course, we closely collaborate with uh, the uh, CCTLD Coordination Center. Uh, and uh, as is a tradition, we uh, prepare statistics on phishing, uh, on uh, collaborating with the domain patrol, uh, and uh, we also share other data. But these are some facts and figures. Uh, in the first half of 2024, uh, by the way, this is uh, these are statistics for the finance industry. So in, in the first half of 2024, we saw a considerable increase year over year 2023 and uh, uh, as compared versus the second half of uh, 2023. You'll see lots of hyperlinks here, uh, and the uh, well, the number of hyperlinks reduced. All the infosec uh, vendors that we collaborate with uh, realize that the schemes are basically the same; they do not change much. Uh, at least, they don't change that significantly. Uh, while in the past. Uh, we we would be surprised to see that uh, a resource uh, would only be available to a limited number of IP addresses. Now it's business as usual, and uh, you know uh, they uh, try to register now third level domains uh, and uh, work with subdomains to a greater extent. Uh, 
the oh, well, financial institutions are in the lead naturally uh online services and uh delivery services uh closely follow the financial institutions uh, these statistics uh, on the requests that we sent uh, to the coordination center in the first half uh, this number uh, went up and the um well most of the requests uh, uh pertain that you uh were sent to regru and other registrars it's worth mentioning that uh, uh most of the phishing attacks uh, were tar targeted financial institutions uh as described by dmitry for instance they use the marketplaces uh scheme we call it uh, the mammon uh scheme and we give a detailed description of this uh, scheme in our press releases naturally objective number one is to steal banking uh, data and uh, login data Uh, well, uh, in the past, uh, it was ba balanced out, but uh, now uh, everyone wants to steal the money. Uh, the average uh, financial losses suffered by the physical persons uh, amounted to uh, 200 US dollars. Uh, well, uh, we basically have uh, the same figures. 300 to 350 US dollars. And of course, uh, this is not on a par with uh, the losses suffered by entities rather than uh, physical uh, uh, persons. B2B scale attacks uh, are uh, uh, attacks that amount uh, to losses uh, to uh, losses of uh, several million Russian rubles in the dot are you the main zone uh, we registered the greatest uh, number of uh, lookalike uh, and copycat uh, brand uh, phishing uh, sites almost 19% uh, uh, are second level domains and the rest of them are third level domains as was mentioned by the previous speaker. Well, uh, just uh, to briefly go over that scheme, uh, a, uh, a company who wants to register a uh, a uh, lookalike uh, domain name uh, gets uh, the registration without any problems. And, and then uh, regardless of the industry, uh, the brand suffers uh, from the fact that the copycat uh, website uh, displays illegal content uh, or it can be used for online fraud purposes and the victims uh, would uh, uh, lose their personal data or money and uh, once again i'd like uh, to uh, highlight uh, the need of having a registry of, uh, inside every registrar to uh, aggregate the data and then use the neural networks or scoring systems uh, to double check uh, the domain names uh, type of scoring algorithms uh, are used by everyone now and uh, copyright holders would support these activities uh, uh, both uh, in financial terms uh, and uh, in other terms. We need to uh, warn uh, a potential registry uh, that if there is a breach, the domain is going to be uh, blocked uh, or discontinued by the registrar. We don't want to uh,
limits uh, anyone's business, but uh, we uh, want to uh, reduce the number of phishing. And of course, we would be happy to collaborate with the InfoSec counterparts. Uh, we, we want to sign uh, data sharing agreements with third level domains uh, as well. Second level uh, domains, uh, if blocked, uh, well, it takes a long time to uh, detect uh, and uh, to detect illegal content uh, in uh, second level uh, domains. And the registers uh, are really unwilling uh, to block second level domains. And of course, the exaggerated activities uh, clearly affect uh, the transparency of the internet. Lookalike brands and domains uh, are registered in the Russian domain zones. Uh, and uh, well, it, it just shows you uh, the uh, ratio between Russian and foreign domain, domain names. API databases uh, should be expanded for both uh, newly registered uh, domains. Uh, and I always uh, tell everyone that uh, this, this should be an option put on the table. It does not result in any financial, financial or legal liabilities. Uh, We'll just uh, filter out garbage or malware uh, posted uh, on your uh, website. Detecting various lookalike and copycat uh, websites is something that we can do with the help of fine tuning uh, our uh, scoring systems and technologies. Uh, the rest of my presentation are case studies uh, that I wanted to share with you. Uh, I will quickly uh, go over them because they're all well known to you. We've been discussing them for years and end, but I just wanted to highlight that the agenda uh, is changing all the time. For instance, uh, in the past, uh, scammers would ask you to vote uh, for a niece of some friend uh, via WhatsApp, but you would need to click on the hyperlink uh, to log in. Uh, well, now Telegram accounts are hijacked, uh, and uh, uh, you would uh, allegedly get uh, a message from the help desk of Telegram saying that your account is going to be blocked if you uh, don't send some uh, authorization data to the help desk, and so on and so forth. So, uh, within less than a year, 1.8 million Telegram accounts have been hijacked, and these accounts were uh, abused uh, to, ma uh, to um, mail out messages uh, using the contact uh, contacts uh, contained there. Um, stealing money, uh, not just from the victim, but uh, from the uh, from his or her relatives, uh, is the main objective. And the same holds true for WhatsApp, as was mentioned by the previous speakers. Uh, the scale is huge, and uh, how come we're uh, talking about hijacking uh, in the messengers? Because they use uh, fake websites and phishing uh, sources, as well as. Uh, scam resources. As far as banks are concerned, Alexander gave a very detailed description of all the possible schemes pertaining to investment activities and so on and so forth. What we see is that uh, traffic is generated by a Telegram channel. Uh, you go there to buy some shares or other securities uh, and uh, lots of banks are uh, subject to such a scheme. Uh, Dimitri said that 90% uh, uh, of banks uh, have uh, malicious clones. Uh, and uh, let's take a B2B bank, for instance, uh, Avantgarde, uh, it's a Russian bank. But uh, again, uh, it works in a B2B sector. That's why it's not susceptible to such attacks. So uh, that's the Mammon scheme. Uh, the 
objective is to steal the money. Uh, coverage uh, is basically everyone, uh, all the brands uh, uh, such as classified, online classified ads, uh, but, but the banking sector uh, also suffers losses because, uh, well, uh, this is the block diagram of the scheme. Uh, you don't even need to create a fake uh, classified. You can, you can just scan uh, Classified, real classified, uh, select a victim, uh, use uh, the Avita Messenger to get in touch with uh, with the potential victim, uh, send him or her uh, a hyperlink saying that uh, the payment was received for uh, a good or service, uh, and uh, it's an automated uh, Telegram bot that could be used. By the way, I covered that during my uh, presentation last year at TLDCon. And uh, so you can uh, create fake pages for payment and for the return of payment. So map, uh, the name moment uh, uh, originates from the fact that you can be fooled two times. You can be scammed for money two times. You pay, uh, uh, you, you pay once and then uh, you pay again when you try to get your money back. Uh, and uh, it's a P2P uh, transfer, money transfer. Loyalty programs, Virus uh, is, is another scheme. Uh, banks, uh, are targeted by the scammers and they use context advertisements uh, to this effect. Context advertisements or uh, pop-out advertisements were not uh, as popular, but now uh, uh, they've been revived. Users are redirected with the help of uh, various hyperlinks and the ultimate phishing domain would uh, require either banking data, uh, such as uh, login and password, uh, or uh, banking card data. It's uh, quite a widespread uh, scheme uh, and the top Russian banks, uh, top six Russian banks uh, suffer from this uh, scheme. This is uh, the flow chart uh, of uh, the scheme used, uh, launching the content, script, redirect, uh, and the uh, fill-in form. Uh, this scheme does not require any technical skills or uh, any legal preparation. And these schemes are often used by underaged uh, scammers or guys who want to um, uh, make a quick buck. It's not a trend, it's a pain point, I would say. And uh, I just uh, uh, wanted to highlight that uh, most of the people present here uh, know uh, that it's a huge uh, pain, headache for the banks and the Yandex uh, tries uh, to counter uh, the uh, pop-up pop uh, advertisements. Uh, the average response time can vary from uh, 15 to 24 hours, but on average, it takes quite a long time. It takes the entire working day. Uh, well, the hyperlink will stay active for the entire day. And information security companies need to uh, block the traffic altogether. Well, uh, uh, Prosecutor General's office was mentioned today, and I just wanted to point out that uh, they are interested uh, in uh, schemes pertaining to selling driver's license, uh, diplomas, and so on and so forth. In 2020 and 2021, this scheme was popular when people would buy uh, medical uh, medical documents pertaining to the COVID. Now, uh, the, same uh, the same scheme is used for selling a driver's license. We detected over uh, 200 uh, phishing domains that uh, offered to sell offer to sell a uh, driver's license and medical documents for, uh, for the traffic police. Uh, 
some of them uh, stole the money and uh, some of them were even more complicated. For instance, uh, uh, more services were imposed uh, on the victims. Uh, this is it. I will be happy to take your questions, uh, if any. Well, I have a brief question, if I may. Uh, my question is about uh, uh, tricking services uh, offered by lookalike uh, websites. As far as I understand, non-branded phishing is uh, gaining steam. Do you think it's going to be a popular uh, service if uh, x1sd.ru domain is registered and uh, then a subdomain would be used for copycat uh, purposes? Well, uh, I get an impression that uh, it's not uh, a lookalike, uh, but uh, over 70% uh, uh, in the uh, Russian domain zone are uh, lookalike. So uh, you're saying it's still relevant. It is. Uh, and, you know, uh, digital risk protection uh, is something uh, that we are trying to push forward. Uh, well, uh, people uh, uh, want to protect uh, against types typo scoring, but typo scoring is not a digital risk per se. However, potentially it could evolve into a risk. So it's just a, a small uh, share of, uh, it could be a small part of uh, large scale uh, scanning schemes. Uh, so uh, I think I'm, I'm going to be raising this issue until we resolve it. But this is something that you specialize in as a cyber security expert. Uh, you can, uh, but how, how do we uh, uh, inform uh, the uh, copyright holders about the need uh, to deal with such threats. Well, uh, working groups should be trilateral. Copyrights, uh, security experts, and registrars should be invited to meetings of working groups. Thank you so much, uh, Stanislav. Uh, we give the floor to banks, to experts, and now let's uh, move on to law enforcement. Piotr Zarevsky, head of uh, uh, the main department of digital development of preliminary investigation, the investigative committee of the Republic of Belarus. Pedro, the floor is yours. Thank you for inviting me. Indeed, uh, uh, I have some information to share with you and I have lots of questions. Uh, in uh, Well, I started uh, my career as an investigator uh, back in the 1990s uh, uh, when the, uh, the Republic was crime ridden. Uh, there were murderers uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, then in the 2000s, uh, drugs became the main problem. We're talking about uh, uh, crystal meth, uh, spices, and so on and so forth. Drugs are still a problem, but, uh, 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 well, uh, they've been, uh, their share has been reduced, uh, while the cyber crime uh, is on the rise. And uh, law enforcement uh, agencies will not be able to cope with them on their own. Uh, uh, two years ago, we developed, oh, sorry, we established the main department of digital development of pre preliminary investigation. In other words, the digital uh, capacity was put under a single umbrella of this department. Well, uh, the classical anti-crime efforts uh, boil down to uh, catching the criminals and putting them in jail. And this is the end of the story. That's what we do among other things. Uh, and the sh this slide shows the top five uh, criminal uh, uh, cyber groups uh, that were uh, caught in the past uh, two years. Well, uh, they are spread all over the globe. Therefore, it's uh, impossible uh, to uh, catch and imprison all of them. So uh, we focused on the heads, the developers, and financiers, while the uh, ordinary uh, rank and file workers are still are still at large. They create new groups. They join efforts. They team up. It's a never-ending story. Therefore. Uh, uh, it's work in progress, though. 
we know uh, the way they work uh, because they uh, usually uh, use the very same schemes. Uh, most of them, well, all of these uh, groups, criminal groups, uh, used phishing attacks. Several years ago, uh, our agency developed uh, the uh, trace evidence information system and all the investigators, when they uh, started new criminal cases, uh, had to populate the system with the digital indicators such as the domain names uh, used uh, abused by the criminals i'm not talking about phishing alone uh, we're talking about drug trafficking pornography stuff like that for instance uh, this slide shows uh, just a single domain name uh, and the huge number of uh, criminal cases initiated in our small country uh, the uh, blocking uh, procedure is very similar to that embraced in Russia and Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, LGBY uh, runs restricted access lists, so we populate the list with the information, and the providers get this data in real time to block to block access to users to these uh, web. Uh, resources. The legal framework is something that we're not happy with because it's done at the level of prosecutors, uh, at, at the level of regional prosecutors. Uh, and we try to minimize uh, the uh, the time uh, for feeding the data to the restricted access list. And this is the anti-phishing information system. Uh, uh, these are our regional affiliate officers, offices that uh, feed the data into the information system every morning and uh, during the day uh, they uh, send the data to the prosecutors uh, and uh, the prosecutors uh, double check it and uh, sometimes uh, domain domains uh, are blocked uh, on the following morning what we're currently doing uh, is as follows. Uh, well, uh, heated debates are taking place in our parliament uh, to uh, to uh, delegate the power to uh, block websites uh, at a lower level. And that would help us uh, remotely block uh, the resources without so much paperwork, which is now obsolete. This is another uh, system that we uh, uh, developed on our own. It's a system for detecting phishing internet resources. Uh, it screens uh, advertisements, uh, uh, search engines, it screens uh, documents uh, and blocks uh, the phishing resources. Uh, a lion's share of the phishing resources can be detected even before uh, victims fall prey. And by the way, alpha polls uh, become uh, have become very popular. We see them uh, in uh, our blocked uh, list uh, all the time. Uh, this is correspondence in one of the chats used by a criminal uh, group. By the way, uh, we monitor uh, certain chats. So we know when they change the domains and we immediately block them. It's a long story, but uh, it's uh, a scandal in the chat when uh, rank and file workers uh, complain to uh, their bosses uh, or the developers that uh, a domain has been blocked. And uh, the developer uh, is just a teenager uh, who lives in the Moscow suburbs uh, is saying that uh, they or uh, the domains are blocked uh, in some tricky way in in Belarus, and it's uh, you know it's difficult to evaluate something which never happened. But uh, uh, this particular phrase uh, is a good indicator of how effective our our work is. We simultaneously uh, uh, developed uh, standard letters, both in Russian and in English, uh, that are uh, sent to registrars. We believe that this this, this approach is way more effective. I don't need. I, I don't think I need ex to explain myself. Uh, 
Well, uh, just to mention, uh, you run an investment project uh, for Russian speakers, but uh, let's say we block it uh, in Belarus, but what about Russia and Kazakhstan as well as other Russian speaking countries? People would would still uh, have their money stolen if we don't block it. And criminal groups uh, get used uh, uh, and uh, they adapt uh, to our activities. So they would register lots of domains and uh, they would switch over to a different uh, domain uh, in real time if the previous domain is uh, uh, blocked. So uh, this, uh, uh, and it takes uh, us almost 24 hours to block another domain. And uh, most of the registers are also hosting providers uh, and And uh, they suffer, I mean, scammers suffer much damage uh, if uh, a, a hoster blocks not just the domain, but also the website. And of course, we uh, include this data into the anti-phishing uh, information system. Uh, we uh, keep uh, track of uh, the registrars who collaborate with us. Uh, well, an unpleasant uh, trend is as follows. A hoster... Uh, uh, replied no problem we blocked uh, we block uh, domains at uh, your request but i blurred uh, some uh, some of the lines uh, in the response of a russian register uh, the, uh, this register uh, referred to a convention to a totally different convention saying that uh, they will not block the domain well, uh, we received, they received a letter from a gov.by, which is an official resource, uh, and uh, an abuse uh, should be uh, considered in any case. So uh, I, I really hope that we will speak the same language with all of you sooner, sooner or later. And of course, we want to respond as uh, fast as possible. Uh, Oftentimes, uh, an hour of a phishing uh, activity results in dozens, in dozens of uh, victims uh, with uh, financial losses amounting to uh, several uh, hundred thousand euros. We used who is services to uh, uh, determine data on the register uh, on the re uh, registered domains. Now uh, we don't get such data, and. You know, we uh, used emails uh, to run our analysis, and I believe that uh, the paper-based uh, information flow should be streamlined and should become a, a thing of the past. Uh, let's have, uh, let's say, we have uh, our suspicions about the domain, uh, and of course, we would get uh, a uh, in order from the Prosecutor General Office, but we want to block it as fast as possible. In conclusion, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this conference. In Belarus, we attend various fora all the time on a regular basis, uh, and uh, we have established a close uh, cooperation uh, with the business and the law, other law enforcement agencies uh, to uh, counter criminal groups and i believe that we can scale it up uh, on a global level thank you thank you peter uh well we don't have uh, that many registrars uh, in the room uh, i represent a registry so uh let, let let me speak on behalf of the people who get lots of requests uh, you have to be clear on two things you mentioned uh, the paper-based uh, uh paper flow. Uh, well, uh, we have a domain that we uh, launched in uh, 2012 to, to minimize the uh, paperwork uh, uh, and only authorized competent authorities uh, have access. Uh, there are a total of uh, 12 of them, three of them are represented on the stage. Well, if you give us access to this, uh, to this wonderful resource, uh, well, it might be complicated. And secondly, I do understand your headache about talking to the uh, 
registrants. Uh, however, for the registers, it's a separate headache because it's about customer relations, uh, cost, and so on and so forth. Well, uh, Dmitry mentioned that they have problems with foreign registers. You are saying that you have problems with the Russian registers. So what I suggest you do is uh, 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 you don't go directly to a register, but rather send a request to the uh, to the national third computer emergency response team. Unfortunately, uh, they were unable to attend uh, today's uh, conference, uh, but they uh, respond uh, very quickly to requests, and they have several ways uh, to uh, block traffic. They can act uh, both as competent authorities and they can uh, go, uh, they can send requests to the registrars through the domain patrol. And in addition to that, uh, being a uh, coordination center, a public co coordination center, they can go to uh, the prosecutor general's office, the Russian communication supervisory agency uh, to block the domains. So like I said, they act extremely quickly. Uh, they can go through the prosecutor general's office uh, or the domain patrol uh, to process all the requests. And by the way, th this is part of the job description to deal with the requests coming from you. So uh, the cert uh, gov .ru, uh, is the uh, address. Uh, I can uh, introduce you to them if you want me to. They are wonderful people uh, and they would be happy to uh, collaborate with you among other uh, people. Uh, you had a chance to talk to them at the RIG for Russian Internet Governance Forum. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So if you change the focal point a bit, uh, it'll all uh, work uh, in your case. Just go, don't go to the registry uh, directly, uh, go to the, uh, go to them. Uh, uh, as for the registrars, uh, Marina Brick is the last speaker of the day and she is the uh, domain uh, product uh, business, uh, head of the domain product business, uh, Runity, Runity, Runity supports 74, just over 70, 74 percent of the domain names. Uh, well, uh, let me add to the previous question. How come uh, you uh, don't go to the Russian investigative committee? Uh, they could have uh, taken your request and forwarded it to us. Right. Uh, let's uh, focus on the uh, third uh, computer emergencies uh, response team and coordination center. But you can go through the investigative committee as well. Uh, it it'll all be direct communications. All right. As far as my presentation is concerned, uh, in uh, Runity, I'm responsible for domain development uh, and the relevant services and platform development. And for this particular session, uh, we prepared an overview uh, on the DNS abuse. Uh, the three registers, as was mentioned by Olga, uh, account for 74% uh, of the domain market. Therefore, uh, this data can be used to get uh, uh, the uh, entire picture uh, of uh, the situation in the Russian market. Uh, let me briefly introduce uh, the Russian registers uh, to you. Uh, uh, Rus Center uh, deals with large companies. Uh, they uh, it, it is responsible for large domain portfolios. Uh, Reg.ru uh, is a uh, more democratic brand. And as far as the domain business is concerned, uh, this is uh, the register of uh, the small, uh, small size uh, register for uh, uh, Russian uh, small and medium businesses. And uh, R01 is the oldest register for resellers operating in Russia. Now let's focus on the requests. Let's start with the sources of such requests. Uh, we traditionally get requests uh, from six different types of applicants. Uh, in three out of uh, six, uh, we're talking about uh, Security threat requests. Uh, uh, in other words, these are law enforcement agencies, and they, they include the public uh, public agencies, uh, uh, courts of law, competent authorities, uh, 
Minister of Internal Affairs and uh, public uh, officials. And uh, two other categories uh, include uh, business applicants, such as lawyers and uh, copyright holders. And private uh, requests, uh, it's a monthly crew category. Uh, the reasons might be different, for instance, fight for justice, uh, a different view uh, as opposed uh, to the view of uh, a resource owner and so on. As for the types of requests, there are two main categories. Uh, in one case, applicants uh, want an action, uh, and uh, in the second category, they want information. For instance, if we get uh, a request from the police, primarily they want us to share information with us. Copyright holders uh, usually ask us uh, to either block uh, an illegal activity at the uh, uh, or uh, get uh, information uh, to uh, go to court. Uh, well, uh, the methodology might clarify some of the uh, things here. We processed all the incoming requests in the way they were uh, sent to us by the applicant. They, uh, they, they, they would uh, require an immediate block without evidence or they would accuse a register of fraud without any evidence again. So uh, we focus on the social aspect of the data. For instance, uh, if uh, it's about a fraud and uh, an applicant uh, wants us to block a resource because uh, he believes that uh, it's a fraud, So we uh, we put it into the fraud category uh, in the statistics. I'm gonna uh, give you a breakdown of the phishing fraud scamming uh, attacks uh, later on. There will be a pie chart on that. So depending on uh, the uh, type uh, specified by the applicant, uh, we did this breakdown. Uh, let me share some facts and figures with you. Uh, the incoming, uh, the number of incoming requests uh, went down uh, in 2024, year over year 2023, uh, by almost a quarter. Uh, initially, the network activity uh, went down uh, in 2022 and 2023. We saw. Uh, a greater number of requests, and now uh, we're past the peak numbers. Now let me uh, share with you the breakdown uh, by types uh, of uh, requests. We use the uh, key uh, key key uh, words for uh, the breakdown. For instance, if uh, the applicant used uh, fraud in the title, then so be it. Subnet farming, uh, sorry, botnet and farming uh, share uh, was, uh, shares were insignificant for farming. Uh, we only received 14 requests, uh, so it's almost zero, and that's why they were not included in the pie chart. Regru and Ru Center are the two most popular registers, uh, and uh, they uh, stated that the peak happened in April. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's a way to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the .ru domain zone. Let's deep dive into the main figures. Ru Center and R01. Uh, on average, get uh, six, uh, 6,100 uh, requests per month. And competent public authorities, again, for just 9% of uh, uh, the requests, of the incoming requests. Uh, we get most of the requests from the lawyers, uh, copyright holders, and uh, if you take a look uh, at the uh, re, uh, at the ratio of uh, 
the domains uh, in the requests, uh, then we'll see that every 26th domain uh, is under the threat of a, a request of being blocked. Uh, the ratio for reg.ru is lower. Uh, well, it's significantly lower. But take a look uh, at uh, the number of requests coming from the competent and public authorities. It's way higher. And uh, let's uh, uh, wrap up my presentation on the upbeat note. Uh, Secondary market queue to the registers would be uh, less, uh, is going to be shorter than uh, the queue uh, for registering new domains. And if you compare uh, new domain registration uh, to uh, abuse requests, you'll see that the ratio is 6.5 to 1, though it should be 20 to 1. And uh, let's hope that this ratio will go up uh, as we grow our uh, part of the internet. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Uh, let me add to that. Uh, I already uh, talked about the uh, computer emergency response uh, team uh, coordination center. It, it was part of your 9% uh, share. So if you go via the coordination center, then your request uh, requests will not fall into the 90% uh, category with the lower uh, priority, despite the fact that uh, you use the gov.by uh, extension. You are in a different jurisdiction, and uh, you know uh, fake uh, email emails uh, are also a problem. Therefore. Uh, Requests requests are rejected. Uh, so go go via the coordination center. We have a different uh, queue for uh, uh, requests coming from competent and law enforcement authorities. So if you want to fall into a different category, uh, which is in the fast lane, uh, go uh, via the coordination center. That would be a great approach. Uh, we're almost out of time as far as our section is concerned. Uh, we almost have no time for the Q&A, but of course we will take a couple of questions from the floor. Uh, let's take two questions. Ilya was uh, the first one to raise uh, his hand. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, I just wanted to offer my comment on what Dmitry had to say. Have you ever tried to uh, use the abuse context from the who is database on the, I mean, as far as the registrars are concerned? Uh, well, who is contact uh, is uh, all, always uh, concealed. Uh, well, ab an abuse contact from the who is. You mean the email of a registrar? Uh, they all they only say uh, we take uh, requests uh, via the website. Uh, uh, use this form. Can they do that? Well, uh, uh, ask uh, ask Mikhail. Uh, we already uh, raised this issue at the very beginning. It's a good question. Oh, well, the contract says that uh, they they have to, uh, uh, as far as abuse uh, contacts are concerned. Well, uh, should should it be email or just uh, a web form? Uh, web form is uh, actually uh, a subtype uh, of email. So it's a great question for the lawyers. But my general recommendation would be as follows. Uh, if you send a request to a registrar uh, or uh, to the compliance department, to ICANN compliance department, details are important and the uh, language uh, is important. Evidence uh, plays a huge role in that. Uh, and, uh, you know, the way you phrase your request also plays a very important uh, uh, role. Uh, for instance, a uh, website is not something that uh, registrars deal with. Uh, they will refer you to the hosting providers. However, if you specify that the domain is abused, then uh, formally it's under the mandate of registrars. 
uh, of a registrar. So even such uh, phrases are important. As for the ICANN compliance department is concerned, uh, the phrasing is uh, uh, important and the number of uh, pieces of evidence that you provide to a registrar is also important. The uh, obstacles uh, that you face in collaborating with one reg registrar uh, might not breach the letter of the law, you know, But overall, uh, you need to provide exhaustive information, as much context as information as possible, as much evidence as possible, and uh, be careful with the phrasing. That's the general recommendation uh, for everyone if you face challenges like that. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, will, I guess uh, we will contact uh, you for additional consultations uh, because, uh, you know, uh, there were some technical limitations uh, on the part of a registrar. Uh, well, uh, we don't have uh, Pavel, but we have Peter here on the stage. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, uh, you mentioned the Russian registrar, uh, and uh, Russian registrars cannot uh, make verdicts on uh, .ru domains. Uh, they can only get requests uh, from uh, the domain uh, patrol uh, for uh, .ru and .rf domains. As for uh, the other domains, you can uh, send your request directly to the registry and uh, it's the registry rather than the registrar who would deal with the request and they will quickly block these domains if they're abused. Uh, well, in the CCTLD, they have uh, their own procedure. You have to register first, then to the register, and then I can. New domain zones uh, can be referred to registries directly without going through the registers, and the registry will immediately block a domain. And uh, this is especially true for. Uh, uh, the .ru, uh, as, as for .org or .biz, you can uh, refer it to the uh, registry. Uh, the registry will forward it to the registrar uh, and it will be blocked shortly. And uh, they uh, solve these problems without any, uh, any headache. That's a great piece of advice, Peter. By the way, uh, keep this in mind. I will, uh, I will definitely uh, follow up on your advice, and we'll see what it leads to. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We discussed lots of uh, uh, questions, lots of we raised lots of issues. However, uh, the concealed part of the iceberg is still huge, and uh, we'll have enough issues uh, to include in the agenda follow-up conferences. Thank you so much.